Hey everyone and welcome to another Training Thursday. This week I'm super excited to introduce you to an amazing practitioner who I have had um, the absolute privilege of uh, meeting in person over in Bali and uh, being able to see his journey from, um, oh, wow, his extraordinary journey from uh, his own health crises to uh, running multiple different places and spaces as a practitioner, seeing so many people, helping people through anxiety, uh, oncology, all sorts of different um, facets to his practice. And uh, now going online and actually sharing all of his gifts, talents and experiences as a mentor. But today I'm really excited to talk to him really specifically about uh, the way that he teaches finding your niche. Hey, welcome Eddie. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for having me on. So good to talk to you. I'm so, so pumped to have this conversation. Bye. So am I. Cool. So um, we've talked about this. We actually talked about it in Bali while we were over there, that there is this big gaping hole when it comes to uh, when we start to get out in practice and think about who we really want to help. It's like we have this big blinkers that come on and we go, no, no, I've got to help everybody. And uh, you had a version of that, right? You wanted to help everybody in every location, everywhere. <laughs> and and um, it didn't work out too well for me, that one. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit more about um, how it all came to be that you've, you've kind of, yeah, come across this thought process? Yeah, well, that's a pretty big story. How long have we got? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it sort of it started probably eight years ago maybe nine years ago and I was very very lucky to be gifted a business actually so it was a, an established business 10 years it was a health center that had a yoga hall and it had uh, around about 13 practitioners working from it and I got gifted it literally for free you know that stuff doesn't happen um, and you now it wasn't the best running business so it needed a bit of work so I you know, plowed into that. That time I was doing a huge amount of self-development stuff and business development stuff and I was super pumped to be an entrepreneur and I went you know, completely into it, hardcore, and um, developed that up and put a cafe in and we got up to around about 15, 18 practitioners and as I'm sure, and I know that you've been down this, I had many, many hats. I was scrubbing toilets, I was mowing lawns, I was gardening, fixing gutters and then I was marketing and then I was consulting and then trying to micromanage um, you know, 15 to 18 people and it was um, incredibly unfulfilling and incredibly stressful and um, you know I was burning the candle massively having to just stick massive hours in which was disconnecting me from one practice which is why I was really trying to do it but also it was having massive issues um, outside of practice as well like in family life and relationship and it, you know, it ended up you know starting to, to show cracks in a relationship with resentment building because I was spending so much time and effort um, on the business so I was sort of you know, my energy was spent maybe not so much in the right places and so that was taking its toll as well and you know, I was becoming incredibly unfulfilled and unhappy and incredibly stressed out and I felt like that you know that jack of all trade master and none type thing and um, I got the divine knock on the door one day, it was 10 days before Christmas actually, and I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, so life really sort of came crumbling down and that sent me on a, a big journey of, of uh, self-discovery, of learning to connect back with myself and how to find balance. And it took quite a few years. Mm. I had um, a few relapses of my cancer because I was doing everything that I thought I should be doing with my treatments and my diet, and my supplements and all that sort of stuff. Um, but trying to maintain that life that was around me. So epigenetically, I wasn't changing anything. I still have the business and I'm still trying to maintain that because I think, and I've thought a lot about this stuff. Um, on one level, it was satisfying a part of me and a part of my ego. It was doing really well, which was make, giving me a sense of self and a sense of achievement and I was getting the accolades and all that sort of stuff. But it was a, a bit of an unhealthy relationship to, to that. And um, so I had a couple of relapses and so I was really unwell. Like, um, I was pretty close to checking out, actually. I had a, a nine centimetre by eight by three centimetre tumour in my abdomen. <sighs> That's not little. That's yeah, not little. Yeah. And it was in between aorta vena cava, so it was a pretty average place to have it as well. Um, I had two in my chest, two under my collarbone, one in my neck and one in my lung when I was at my worst. So that tumour in my abdomen was pressing my bowel up against one side. and I was pretty unwell. And um, 
it made me realize at one point I had to ask the question like what am I missing you know, I'm doing everything on paper the science side of me you know I'm doing my diet I'm doing the right chemotherapy and blah 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 and it's not working and it should be because artistic cancer which is like the most treatable cancer you know usually first line treatment works you know, 96 percent of the time something like that so why was I having multiple relapses and getting chemo resistant and really aggressive cancer and it, it made me realize that it wasn't what I was doing was the problem. It was the way that I was doing it was the problem. So my epigenetic factors, life, the chemistry of my life, I like to call it, was so chaotic and so uncontrolled and so unfulfilling and stressful that it was literally overriding the best treatments in the world that have proven pretty much to work. So I had to make massive changes and find that balance. And it was a, a long journey to, to understanding what that homeostasis was for me, um, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, financially, all that stuff. So um now, that was a, a long journey of, of tweaking the way that I practice and working smarter, not harder. Um, and this is where the club's been absolutely amazing for me, developing my uh, own program to, to, to give the gifts that I've learned along this journey and basically give everything that I have to offer out in the form of a, a program that I do like the, the club, um, which allows me to work in a different way. So it's not that grind. Um, yeah. <clears throat> And it serves that, that epigenetic side. It serves that part of your well, life to create that homeostasis. Yeah. For sure. You know, it just buys you time for, for you, um, you know, because we're not just Dr. Here's our jobs. You know, we have outside of that, you know, who we are. Um, and, you know, sometimes there's not a lot of space left in our, our working life or daily life for us sometimes and this is you know, now I see the opposite end of this with my patients coming in, cancer patients, and they're very much in that, you know, they haven't been self-caring. There's lots of factors around cancer, but not just that. But, um, you know, they get into this place where you've lost, lost yourself because it becomes about the daily grind and the finances and what have you. Um, and now I get to sort of mentor people how to create that balance again. But, you know, all that really set me on a, on a path of understanding myself more. Um, and when I could understand myself, then I could be of maximum service to people um, mm. and you know, owning my part in this whole journey and my stuff because we've all got stuff um, and it just allows me to come from a place of authenticity and you know just experience so um so so back in the beginning you were spreading yourself thin I was. in multiple different areas and you were giving to the practitioners you were giving to the business you were giving to yeah. your family you were giving to every different type of patient that came in the door totally what happens when you, for want of a better term, niche your life into alignment with you? Like, I mean, I, I also happen to know that I, I've heard a little bit of a part of your story about not wanting to treat cancer patients. Like, kind of going. For sure, for sure. You know, there was a lot of shame around that. You know, I was a practitioner, I was a naturopath, and I had cancer three times. <laughs> it was just like, who am I to talk to anyone about health? You know, look at me. Um, so there was a lot that I had to work through and, um, you know, and to own and to, to see the hidden blessings that was actually in that. You know, I'm a huge believer that, you know, illness comes into your life for a reason. It's not just a, a malfunction of biochemistry, not always. You know, many, especially for the chronic complex diseases, if you've, if you've consulted with enough people, you start and you start to hear their stories. You can see why people get unwell. I know exactly why I got unwell and I don't blame my body whatsoever for getting unwell. Um, but I had to own that um, and, and realise that in suffering, there's a huge amount of learning. Um, and I see that with patients as well. You know, sometimes, you know, they, they learn because when do we, when do we move the most in life? It's when we're in pain, when we're suffering. And you know, that was almost like a, a PhD in suffering for me, <laughs> I suppose you could call it. And, wow, um, that's cool. And in growth. Um, and so, you know, I learned a lot. I'm, I'm by no means an expert, but I just know what I know. Um, and I use that now as, um, you know, my basis one to, for my niche because it's how I can be of maximum service is just through what I've been through in my life. Um, and I've got through it, fortunately. So, you know, I have something to, to offer some people if they're willing to listen. And it allows me to speak from a place of authenticity. And, you know, if I can allow myself, and I'm a huge believer of vulnerability in, in practice, if I can let myself drop into that vulnerable space, it can be a hugely powerful tool to help get the people get people to shift. 
and to move because you know I put a post on Facebook just yesterday and it's without change you don't change and you know if people want to get better they have to change it's not just about taking pills and potions and lotions now they need to make epigenetic changes which is usually life changes which are really yucky and, and this, is, this is a really good point that finding your niche isn't just about I have all this knowledge in this area. I have all the, you know, I know all of the herbs and I know all of the biochemistry and I know all of this in this particular area. Finding your niche is actually that change element, knowing that person's story and, and what's motivating them to change or what's holding them back from creating that change is is the turning point. Like you can know everything about a particular subject or, or you know, um, symptomology or disease state, but that the bit that's that's oh, so important to it is your level of empathy and vulnerability and authenticity knowing what's going to stop that person and what stopped you and what's okay. going to move the needle for them yeah and like you said in your your video like last thursday you know they are just you two months ago two years ago 10 years ago whatever the timeline is and you know that person because you are that person and all you need to do is just the uh, you know I, I think there's a trap that you know, modern practice is starting to go down, which is the whole functional medicine track, which is great. I love functional medicine and that really satisfied the geek in me and I love it and to, to understand the stuff, but it's really about the what of what's going on for them. You know, it's the what. Whereas I like to say, well, what about the why? Um, and to understand the why of someone, you need to open your ear holes and you need to listen to their story. Um, and then once you listen to their story and you can understand their story, then you need to see what needs to change. And if then you can pop down and show them that you're also, you've been um, you know, in your life, you've struggled and it's the same struggles as them. And then you know, that in that whole practitioner patient sort of dynamic just allows them to really feel that, hey, this person knows what I'm going through. Now, like when I'm consulting with people, I don't sell a program. Like I've got my program and it's a $4,000 program. And I don't sell it. All I do is I chat to them and they get to a point where they realize I know what they're going through because the words that I'm using, the experiences and the stories that I'm telling are the ones that they're going through now. I went through them, you know, five years ago. But, you know, when you when you can get in that space and really flow with that and tell it to them just like it was yesterday for you, which isn't hard to tap into because it's right in there and in there, um, they just know that you're the right person. And then if, if the solution fits for them and financially it's viable for them, they buy in and it's not about me selling at all. And you know, it's really important to, to realize that your, your story has meaning and purpose and it's really important for them to hear and it's powerful. Um, but you've got to get vulnerable and you've got to open your ears to what's going on for them. And then you, you allow them to change their why. Mm, you know, totally. I mean, look at my example. I was doing the what. I was whatting the hell out of it. Um, and it wasn't, wasn't cutting the mustard and I was got really close to checking out and it wasn't until I tapped into the why. I got, got well and I maintained my, my health through making sure the why is always covered. Yeah. And the other thing about, um, you know, being a practitioner, finding our niche, because there's a lot of people that are listening that are, you know, either newbie out or have been in, in generalized practice for, for a while and are noticing that, you know, numbers are dropping off, that, that their marketing isn't working per se, because it is quite generalized. Um, there's a level of story and I, I love it. You, you, you apply the, the hero's journey, which is the work of Joseph Campbell. Um, and if anyone's watching, you should definitely check that out. It's extraordinary, not only sharing your own story, but understanding others in their story. And you use it as an amazing, uh, it, like your version of it as an amazing framework for taking people through their cancer journey. But also when we look at practitioners utilizing those parts of their story to understand who they're here to help what what's your take on all of that yeah, for sure you know we're all on a hero's journey and i believe we go from one hero's journey to the next to the next and we just spiral through life um and you know if people that aren't familiar with the the hero's journey it's really when life throws you those curveballs and then you're like a call to action um joseph campbell calls it and then you've got to go on your little journey and you know i always compare it to little frodo baggins you know you've got the massive call to call to duty, call to action, and then look what happened to him. And he went through and he went to the dark depth of Mordor, just like we do when life throws you that. You know, I was like, when I was with my cancer diagnosis, I went into some deep, dark depth of Mordor. But, you know, we always come out of it. Every single time we come out of it. If you look back, you've always got through your hard times. Um, and, you know, you come out the hero and you come out with a higher level of awareness and learning from that. And that's where you can then use that 
the, the next journey and also to help be of service to people. Um, but yeah, so, you know, with the whole niche thing, you know, you are the absolute expert in being you and, you know, what you've been through. So, <laughs> yes, um, it's so true. You are the absolute expert in being you and what you've yeah. been through. Oh, I want that tweeted and plastered all over everywhere. You t-shirt, are- eh? A t shirt, yeah. Um, but, you know, your biography um, is where your niche is. So, you know, you need to look backwards, look forwards, sort of thing. And, you know, but that then again makes us have to look at our stuff. And sometimes we're not willing to look at our stuff just yet. And, you know, the niche is there. It's just whether or not we're willing to own it yet. And that might not be right now, but that might be in the future. And for young prackies too, maybe they've had a pretty sweet life so far and they haven't got any massive stuff that they can utilise to go and serve on a higher level. But, you know, you've got another 60 years of practice in you probably. So I'm sure it'll come. Um, but, yeah, getting too general, I think, is a, a really good recipe. One, for burnout think and I'm feeling unfulfilled but if you can tap into your niche you know from your own story then um you know, it's not working you know, I just tell stories all day I love it I store yeah. I get to listen and get to tell stories get to share get vulnerable there's tears on both sides and um you just get to, to hold that person's hand through it you don't do it for them but you um yeah you know, then, then you can apply your functional medicine and all the other stuff and I think it's just you know, it's the, the best combination to help a person get the best res, um, results possible. Yeah, because we're a whole human being and the being part of it is such an incredible space to hold for people. Uh, it's extraordinary. So um, the other thing I'm hearing, like I, I often hear uh, what our tribe would would be questioning in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were. And anyway, um, the, the, the other thing is that, there is, a, yes, there's a lot of practitioners who have been through their own health journey. Yes. Or they've been through being the person holding the hand of somebody else in their life who has been through a particular type of health journey. Yeah. And like you mentioned, uh, they may not be ready to step up into the role of that for, you know, that part of the population, or they may not be able to step up for, for themselves. But there are other people who may not have gone through a health journey per se. What do you, what's your thoughts on them going back in their biography and, um, and where they might, uh, what are some signposts that they might see that aren't necessarily disease state that they might go, oh, that might be something to do with my niche. Have you, have you got any thoughts on that? Um, well, yeah, I think it's, again, it goes back to that, you know, the, the, the toughest times of our life are where we learn the most. So you know, to timeline it out, you know, what, what have you been through? What have you grown through? You know, it's always good to, to look at that stuff, I suppose. Um, you know, it might not be the diagnosis like cancer. Not, uh, it's not, um, but if it is, great too. Um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> if it is, great. <laughs> it's fodder. Yeah. That's awesome. That's where all the growth and juicy yumminess is that you can you can share. It can be. It can be. And the opposite is true too. It cannot yeah, be too. It depends yeah. on what, what sort of mindset you take towards it. You one of a growth mindset or one of, you know, poor me or victim mentality or whatever. Um, yeah, so it's all mindset stuff, isn't it? Um, but I think, yeah, looking there for, for the niche, you know, it's what you've been through. And it may not be yourself, but you might have supported someone through schizophrenia or a cancer journey themselves. And you're not you know, confident enough to go in and become that, Practice, or maybe you don't even want to because you've got bad memories of, of you know this, this um, illness or whatever it might be but you also were a support person so maybe that's your niche you're the support person and you're the expert of being the support person because you did that and maybe that's a cool niche for you too yeah, yeah, and I know a couple of prackies who um, they're actually the practitioner for support people. For sure, they need it as just as much as the person. When people come to me, you know, I really love it when you know for cancer when the whole family comes or a big part of the family comes. Sometimes they don't, and it's quite sad to see the you know lone soldier sitting in there. But when you get the the whole family in there, I always say to them, "Listen, you've all got cancer here. You know, Joe Blow here has got the the physical diagnosis and carrying the physical burden, but you've got you've got it mentally, emotionally." Know, socially spiritually so you need support as well and um so to have someone who specializes in how to support the care person because that's a different journey in itself that's awesome too so and, and that's not quite as heavy because you know with what i do it can be very heavy emotionally for you 
um, I'm okay with that because you know I've worked with lots of cancer patients and you know, my own relationship to death and that stuff is, is pretty healthy. But if you're not ready for that, then the support person's a great person to, to be for them, to support them. Yeah. yeah. Really cool niches. They need it just as much. Otherwise, and you see this so often, they get on well eventually because they're, they're trying to do it for them and they put their life on the back burner, their health on the back burner to be a complete service to this person are well and they burn out and then they get autoimmune condition or the diagnosis. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the other interesting thing, so I, I always like to break things down. And so if we were, if everybody who's listening and if, if this is resonating with you, this is why we've had a three-part series on this. We've gone from left brain to right brain and now we're going into you know, your story element to it to really, to really, you know, get every different facet of what it looks like to find your niche or even to start, start playing with the idea that you, you are here to serve a particular um, person or persons on the planet. And so if we were going to break it down, there is um, fairly significant moments in our lives and you can look at it through Rudolf Steiner's work and a whole bunch of others that zero to seven is a chunk. Seven to 14 is a chunk. 14 to 21 is a chunk. And then you're yeah, 21 to Saturn returns at <laughs> 28. That's a chunk as well. And so wherever you happen to be in that or beyond, if you were to go and look at these four sections of your life and have a look at one standout moment that was your your moment in Mordor, like your ah, that t shirt. <laughs> That's a lot of t shirt. <laughs> merch, hashtag merch. So, if you were going to look at that one particular moment uh, in that chunk of your life, so if we just went with the first four chunks of uh, your your life and those life cycles, going for the challenging moment. And it could be a challenging moment with somebody else. It could be a challenging moment that you went through personally. It could just be a memory, a random memory. And often it is those random memories because they come up because they're attached to an emotion. Whatever got you through it or however you got through it or whoever got you through it or what, what changes were made that you grew on the other side of that. Just have a little note of what, what stands out. And what you're probably going to find is, of those four timings, there'll be something that links all four of them together. And it might be, you know, might be something huge, might be something random and little thin line, but uh, you know, that, that time period of your teenage years, it might be a mental health thing for some of you. It might be a substance abuse thing for others. It might be gastrointestinal things that came up at a particular time. It might be helping your friends through a particular uh, life condition or, or life moment. And then similar thing happens in your, uh, early, your early parts of your uh, adulthood where you are starting to connect with your identity and those types of times are massive for hero's journey moments. And they're also huge to be able to notice what's going on around you that got you through. And again, if you link those sections together, you'll start to see something of a person or something of a journey that you're helping along the way. Well, uh, yes. Also, sorry, um, and just something that you, you mentioned there, I just wanted to, to highlight, you know, that process that got you through that, that you mentioned, that's your program. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because that's all I've done. My program, you know, it's a 16-week journey for people with, um, with cancer and it's everything that I wish that I had, had or had at that point and the stuff that I did. You know, some of the stuff that's in there I didn't know at the time, I didn't have access to at the time or even knowledge of, but now I've put it together as, you know, what I would have done with aspects of what I did do and that's the program. So, yeah, your program's almost written. It's just about tapping into it and owning it and allowing it to to come to the fore. Yeah, totally. And, and, and no one knows it better than you do. And the words that come up through that timing and the way that you can express it is the way that's going on in somebody else's head out there, but they haven't found the right person saying it that way that they go, oh, yes, it can, I can be helped. My thing can actually shift and change into not what I'm feeling currently. What I also get with some of the, the practice that I, I mentor, they know this and they can see that, but there's ickiness around it and the, they don't, I don't want my niche, I don't like my niche, I don't want it, I don't want it. And it's because they haven't fully explored that and they haven't maybe you know, lent into that stuff to see the blessings in there and work through that, whether that's through psychotherapy or their own explorations or whatever it might be. So 
I think, you know, it's so important for us to work on our stuff. To be of maximum service, we need to be fit for service, don't we? And that means we have to have, have, have worked on that and cleared some of that stuff. We don't have to be perfect. Um, but I think the problem is if we, we try to go in and fake it till we make it, that comes through with our authenticity. Uh, if we need to be as authentic as possible, it means that we can't be lying to ourselves because it's going to come through. Um, totally. Yeah. And so when, if this is you and you haven't done a lot of self-development or other things to do with it and you do start to explore these spaces and places, number one, I would highly suggest getting a mentor. Absolutely. Because it's very likely, well, one would hope that these people have gone through very similar kind of things. So Eddie's an amazing mentor over in Perth and he's got extraordinary access online and does a whole bunch of um, mentoring sessions one-on-one or in small groups. Um, for all sorts of different things. So clinically, business-wise, and this part of it, this, um, this, uh, these parts of being fit for service as a practitioner who's not going to get burnt out, who's going to be able to have a life that they love as well as a practice that they love and to be able to... Finding and defining your niche and just developing that, that program, you know, your, your program. Yeah. Yeah, and so finding a mentor is hugely important. Finding a, a therapist yourself or a practitioner yourself. And so a lot of us in the hub, we often talk about kinesiology as an option, uh, EFT and tapping practitioners. Uh, then we've got our, our psychotherapists, we've got our counsellors, hypnotherapists and others. And, and if you haven't tried these, now I was one of those practitioners when I first came out, I, I, my background's in medical science. So I was like, yep, functional medicine the whole way. And then stuff comes up. And then I got to be surrounded by a whole bunch of practitioners who had a more alternative slant than me. And you don't know it until you try it. And this is the thing that often gets in the way of finding your niche, of going into those spaces and places that you might not have resolved for yourself, uh, for growing, for self-development. You think you know what is going to come, but you don't know until you actually experience it. And so I, that's one of my biggest suggestions around uh, if stuff does come up, lean into finding a therapist or a practitioner and maybe they aren't the types of people that you've usually seen before, but even going through that process of being open to receiving and talking to somebody who is another practitioner who's different to you, being open in those spots that is going to be part of your hero's journey in the end. These are some of the like cruxes of the shifts that you can create for yourself and then f further on for others, I think. Yeah, there's only so much you can think your way through it and it comes to a point where you need to feel your way through it and that's the language of the heart. So, you know, this is where you, you might need to get outside of the textbooks and the, the structural thinking of that left brain and switch over a little bit to that right brain and, and tap into the emotional stuff, which is painful. But again, when there's suffering, there's growth. So um, just do it. Totally. So uh, at the moment, uh, you are an, um, your, your major focus is on uh, oncology patients. And, you, um, and I, I just remembered in the back of my mind that there was a time when uh, you were like, no, nah, not going there. What was the click over that happened for you that you decided, actually, I do have something of value here for people who are going through a cancer journey yeah it was it was the point where i allowed myself to become vulnerable and share um and then i realized that this wasn't wasn't a weakness this was actually a massive strength um, because i saw how it shifted people you know you drop that down and you can just see people's body language change you can see them their eyes just change that holy moly you're just like me. And I think it's so, so common that you get that patient or client, whatever you call them, sit in front of you and, you know, put you on a pedestal and think you're Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect. And um, when you can just show them, hey, I'm just as messed up as you are, um, but I'm aware of it and I'm working through it. And that almost gives them permission to, to admit, hey, this stuff I haven't been doing. Oh, so if you can drop your facade, they drop their facade, they mirror you, and then you can shift them. Um, and so for me, it was really allowing that down, realizing that was a, a really powerful gift that I had through my experience to be able to help shift people. So to, to share my story, and I do that a lot because it, it's a powerful story. And um, every time I tell it, it also helps me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, that was a really pivotal moment. 
Mm, beautiful. Well, I am so ever grateful for you joining us today, Eddie. And um, where it, it, for anyone who is listening, who has that sticky oncology patient or who really wants uh, the type of mentoring that you offer, where is the best place for them to look? Place is my website, which is just uh, www.edwardenever, E-N-E-V-E-R.com. And uh, there's a tab on there called Practitioner Mentoring. If you click on that, you'll see all the different learning opportunities that um, are there. Um, training opportunities, if you want to learn mindfulness training, meditation training, there's a, a six-week course there that you can learn. Um, all different options just to suit you. So have an explore of that. And if you're interested, just reach out. Awesome. Thank you so very, very much. I uh, always love catching up with you and always love talking to you. I, oh, I have an incredible sense of um, oh, with that, that part of you that shares your vulnerability creates such a lovely space for everybody else to share. And um, I feel always uh, heartful when I, when I speak to you. So thank you so much, Eddie. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. All right. I'll catch you later. Bye, people.